good afternoon again, Grace Church, Elizabethtown family. It is good to be with you virtually uh, to tell you a little bit more about myself. It's been really nice to talk with those that I've had a chance to catch up with. I want to remind you that during this time, as I'm reaching out to you uh, or trying to, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know how we can connect via either a virtual communication or through a phone call. Um, know that I'm praying for you and I hope that you are doing well in this time. My family and I are getting settled in pretty well. We're really enjoying being in Kentucky, uh, loving the Commonwealth, and uh, it's been good. I can I can report that I actually did get out for a bike ride once uh, down near Buffalo Lake. There's some great trails on the hill there, so I, I got some mountain biking in. feel good about that. But I wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself, and it, I guess one way to do that is tell you a few books that have been influential in my life or ones that I've enjoyed, uh, what I enjoy reading. So I wanted to start with something uh, that's a little less um, serious. It's a funny thing, actually. Um, if you're not familiar with Patrick F. McManus, he's a, a humorous sports writer. And uh, Patrick McManus wrote, I think it was in Sports Afield years back. He used to write the last story in the magazine. Uh, that was a funny story. That's how I found out about him, by reading through those magazines. Uh, and dreaming about fishing and hunting that I may or may not have ever done in my life. But uh, he wrote some really funny things. And one of the books that I enjoyed of his is a book called The Grasshopper Trap. Uh, it's a collection of short stories that are outdoors themed or stories of his childhood. That's just a lot of fun, really funny things in the book, uh, at least funny things that I enjoy. Uh, one of my favorite stories uh, is he's talking about fishing and uh, stepping on a beaver hole uh, and doing a one-legger down it and ends up uh, hurting himself and forgot that a banana was in his pocket and he smashed the banana on his thigh. And rather than saying, you know, what really happened, he just kind of said, well, uh, actually, uh, don't worry, I put some banana on it so it feels better. So <laughs> just funny things like that in the, in the story that, to me, make me laugh. Maybe if that's not your humor, that doesn't really uh, resonate, but for me, I enjoy it. So that's something about myself. Um, a second book, and I don't have a copy of it to show you, but it's a small book by Alistair Begg called Made for His Pleasure. I read that early in my ministry days, and it was something that really opened up my mind and, I, and helped me to realize uh, that we really are created for the pleasure of God, uh, for His pleasure. And it's in Colossians chapter 1 where we find some of this teaching in Scripture. And so he unpacks a little bit of Colossians 1, talking about what it is that being made for God's pleasure helps us to do. And I just recall that book being really influential in how I approached ministry or how I understood the message of the gospel applied to me is that I really am made to please God and it's for his pleasure. And that was really helpful for myself as I'm one who tends to be, um, well, uh, concerned about how other people particularly uh, see me and also uh, concerned that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, and so it's freeing to realize that that doesn't negate our responsibility of doing what's right, but that I really can, and you really can, learn to please God. It was really helpful. A third book, and I did have a copy so I can show it to you here. It's by Van Gemeren, who was a professor of mine in seminary. Uh, he was actually my Hebrew teacher's Hebrew professor, and he came to RTS to, to do a week-long study, uh, an intensive, on the prophets. And his book, Interpreting the Prophetic Word, was one that just really opened up a lot to me because um, even though I'd read through and studied the prophets some, uh, it was in seminary that we really obviously dealt and, and dove into deeper contexts of scripture. And one of the things that was so helpful was beginning to look at the message of the Messiah from the prophetic viewpoint, uh, thinking about what it must have been like for the people of ancient Israel to consider and wait for a coming king, the Messiah, uh, and to try to read that through the lens without knowing the cross. And that was a, an interesting and difficult discipline to do because so much of how we view and shape, rightfully view and shape scripture, is through the lens of what Christ has done. Uh, but that book really opened up a lot to me because it helped me to understand more clearly the connection of the Old Testament to the New Testament. And I found it a very helpful study. Um, I would love to hear what books have shaped and influenced you. There's obviously many more that could be on my list. I do enjoy reading. I don't read as often as I would maybe like, but neither, neither do I mountain bike as much as I would like. So uh, we do what we can with the time that we have, particularly in the pleasure readings of life. But if there's been 
books that have shaped or influenced you or helped you out, uh, I'd love to hear about it. And maybe it would be good to, to share those uh, as sort of a book club type idea on our Facebook page. There is the GCE Connection private group that you can join. Uh, just look for that on our website and uh, request to be added to our group. And we'd love to have you. Um, I hope that you're enjoying the time that you have. And it is a gift, life that is. I pray that you are well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in person and being able to talk to you more in person again very soon. Thank you for talking. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk again soon. Or I guess I'll talk again soon. Thanks. Bye.